canvas has been prepared for another demonstration we're doing, for this time for East Lindsay Art Society. I've got between two and three hours, I hope. Um, but I've already drawn it out then and used masking tape to uh, put in these umbrella lines, which you'll see me doing in just a moment, um, because I want to prepare that ahead of time, having very little time to actually paint in. But it doesn't matter if I come slightly over these lines, it'll give the effect of light. And I'll also come back into them if I want the paintbrush later. Difficult composition, especially in the foreground here with these figures, and there's a lot of work to do in the time, but we'll see, it'll be very exciting, won't it? No thanks, I'm fine. So I did another one from the other end, looking this way, which you can see on the website, and it was totally expressionist. I really let rip with the colours and the brushwork and gone mad. It was started off by the very first one in the list down there, uh, family, and so on. All of this with the roller and brushes. 
So I know it started off and had a chance to see this. This one was done earlier, it's not secrets. This one was done with rollers, and then working the acrylics over the top. <coughs> if the acrylics aren't bright enough, because they tend to be a bit duller than the oils, then it's quite fun to work oils on the top. But this is the first one in the series. Um, but everything is about um, what's um, going on in the background. This now, acrylics, in case you haven't, don't know this yet, don't, and I don't want to teach Granny to suck eggs, but just some of you might not know some of the stuff I'm saying, so forgive me if you do know all about this, but if you don't, a stay wet palette is so simple to make. A sandwich box, put in two layers of paper towel, put a layer of grease blue paper over the top, wet it all, put your paints in, and they'll stay wet for months. Oil paint, you can actually put them into a plastic bag, put a clean film around on your palette and freeze them. And they'll last, they'll thaw out again. So if you didn't know those tricks, there's little things I'm going to talk to you about as we go on. So we get those over. So that's a simple stay wet palette as compared to the ones that cost 20 quid. Brushes. I was going to bring my watercolour brushes. Now, watercolour brushes, I have two packs on. I need far more watercolour brushes than I do any other sorts of brush. This is my acrylic set, and they're mainly filberts, but you'll see some other brushes there, for instance, like a rake, um, or texture brushes, and sponges, um, and some obviously very fine rounds, but mainly filberts because I find that the filbert with the slightly it's a flat brush with a rounded end gives me far more versatility. Um, it's especially doing portraits, and you don't want a flat square edge. The flat brushes were invented for the impressionists to do quick impressionist flat strokes, but I prefer filberts. Now these are very reasonable, and the consistency is very important um, because you don't want them too hard or they scrape the paint away. Too soft, like watercolour brushes, they clog up. Filberts and nylon, and for oils and acrylics. That consistency you'll find, you, just, you can delicately place the paint or you can put brush harder if you wish to work longer. In watercolour you must only use artist quality. You mustn't use students if you can help it because it's not a saving. The artist quality goes four or five times as far. So you're not saving buying the cheaper one, it's just the interest in the investment. And the SAA do their own brand as well, which are almost as cheap as the, uh, the unprofessional ones, the, the ordinary amateur ones. So, you know, why? So in watercolour, I do advise um, that you use professional quality. In acrylics and oils, you can get away with less. You can get away with the students. You can use jo Rougen, uh, Brownie Georgian and so on in oils. And they're, 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 these days, they're pretty good. They're, they're pretty good. But the cheaper the acrylic, the thinner they get. And they go very transparent. So better acrylics are better for you. And for instance, white, use a heavy body. Get a, get a thicker white for a heavy body, rather than it being too translucent, okay? That's your tips. Right, now I've got to get going. Where am I going to start? Well, I'll start with some, again, with some mid-tones and work towards my, my lighter colours. I'll start with the greys and purples in the background here. I'm going to use both of these at once, actually. Hues. <coughs> hue is warm, cool. To every single <coughs> colour, there is a warm, cool hue. So lemon yellow is a cool yellow. Yellow ochre is a warm yellow. It goes towards the reds, okay? So anything that goes towards the blue, ice is cool. Anything that goes towards the reds is warm. And that's the same with, um, with the reds. You know, alizarin, uh, sorry, um, rose is going to be a cool red, and uh, cadmium red is going to be a warm red. So every single colour, green, has a, has a warm look into them. Right, plenty of paper, and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of cadmium into that well. There we go. And let's get my, my roller going. Not too much water, because it will be very thin if I do. At first, you can actually see your um, drawing underneath through the, the roller, which is quite useful. So, so oh, when you start painting, you just, you just get lost. Um, no, um, we are there. going to be surprised how I'm trying to go over here for you, because I can move right there. Um, you see how fast we can, we can work across. Now, I put these lines on already, and for that, I use just masking tape, ordinary masking tape. I use it slightly more of an angle, I can come down to a curve. I don't mind the effect of light, I don't mind softer edges. I've got to get a little bit closer to it just to get this done. And whilst I'm doing it, if I see it anywhere else, I'm going to put it elsewhere. So, a bit more paint. And if I work from my lighter colours downwards, quite often I don't have to wash the palette out of the brush out, because I can actually um, Mix it and blend it as I go along. So that comes down to about halfway there. There's my 
Max loses it. It's just a lovely, it's an expressive way to paint. It's get in there and enjoy. And this is the thing with the demo for me. You lot, I hope you're not going to enjoy it, but I'm going to enjoy it up here. And I hope that will show in the painting. Painting the right colours and the right shapes, this jigsaw method. And I'm going to be using both of these. Don't mind the light comes across a bit to give the effect of light there. And I can put one thing over another with this. Put light down there as well. And, uh, and then another label that I have one of my students, because I have private students come both as a class on Fridays and, and individually. And, uh, and she is going blind. How can an artist paint when they go blind? She's got a regressive degenerative uh, illness. You know that eventually she's going to lose her sight. Which is really sad. She's a lovely lady, been painting with the years, selling her work. And, and she said to me the other day, Peter, my husband say, you know, that you're doing a lot of the work and I helping me out. When shall I stop painting? I said, look. I said, you're enjoying me painting with you because I, you know, I do half the painting with her. She's colour blind. You can't see you know, which colour is which half the time. But I said, look, people are enjoying your paintings, aren't they? They're enjoying, you, you know, you're taking these out, they're selling them, they're enjoying, so you're giving people pleasure. You have fun in doing them here, even though it's a struggle and it's getting worse. I said, when you come to me and the pressure is so great that you're not enjoying, when you come to me and you're not enjoying, then we give up. But I said, until then, you just enjoy. And I'll, she did a portrait the other day, she couldn't see what she was painting. I painted half of it, but the point was, she enjoyed seeing me do it with her anyway, and then she was enhancing things. And What the hell? You know, life is so short and fragile, we need to enjoy ourselves. So I'm showing you a joyous way of painting that. Slapping paint in the other. Right, we've got a little bit um, more mustardy down there, so I'm going to take some yellow ochre. Same colour. I'm going to change my... My colours. I haven't got to wash the palette out yet. A bit more yellow ochre there. Down, down the bottom now. Down. And it's all, oh, there's a shadow here, that's, that's all around here. So fast, it's a loose way to work. And suddenly this painting will come together. It's um, say like a jigsaw, you can't see what the jigsaw is, but then quite suddenly, there's a devil when you get to places like that. You can't get to it, do you? Move that down and up again. <coughs> and they come out there, right through up to here. The same colour is going on over the back of the coat here. I mean, I, I probably, if I don't finish this completely today, you'll get the idea of it. Um, and if I finish it at home with a brush, just to tighten things up, but by then you will at least have seen how this way works. You, know, you need a fair size canvas to do this on, but I have done it on canvases about that size. And again, if you go on YouTube, you can see it being done. One of my students, my private students, that comes, we often work side by side. So I'll have a painting there, she has one there. And as I do it here, she's working next to me, and we film the two. One of these examples is on there. A little bit more yellow ochre in that. <coughs> if you feel you wish to ask any questions, please do. Like I say, the Rosco brushes I could have brought them to show you, but another time because you'll, you'll be quite fascinated by the collection of brushes. You find that many artists are like fishermen. They collect brushes and never use them. They collect floats and never use them. And they have their favourites they stay with. This can happen a little bit with, with brushes. You have your favourites. See what comes down there, down there. It's almost a cubist painting at this stage. We're just painting angles and Look at the colour is going in. Let's look at the background. Background greys. Blue greys, greys. Easiest way to make a grey, nicest way to be in control of your greys is not black and white. I have been using, I don't use use black much, but I have been using black in many of these now because I use it at the very end just to pick things out, but black can make things very sooty, especially in mixing. I tend to mix my darks with deep blue, Prussian blue, uh, or ultramarine, mainly Prussian, and a warm, like a brown. And then you've got a full range of greys. Um, so blue and brown will give you a grey, and depending which blue and which brown you use as to what grey you get. So I'll play with those. And for you more advanced people, I assume you too, <laughs> um, but for the more advanced of us, especially with oils, um, try mixing the Lisbon crimson with Viridian green sometime. It sounds foul, doesn't it? But look at the beautiful grey they'll get with that. It goes either to a pink or to a greeny grey. The skies, it could make a sky. So a little white in that as well. Little, little tricks of the trade to try. Right, grey, so I'm going to use now a little bit of I'm not even going to bother changing the paint. A little bit of white. 
And let's see, I want a sort of blue grey there, so I'm going to use some quite light blue. I'm going to use some cerulean in this case. Now, with that yellow, it's already going a sort of greeny blue. I'm going to need to brown that up a bit, a little bit of burnt sienna into that. The camera's getting it all, so if you can't see it now, I'll get it later. A little bit of burnt sienna to give me a blue grey, and all that blue. That's giving me a nice blue grey. So we are look blue grey, so I can go warmer or darker. In fact, I'll put a little bit of uh, magenta into that, just to make it a fraction warmer. Normal, cheap, run of the mill, factory shop type canvas. It's often better to give your canvas, this hasn't had it, this is just straight onto it, but you know, the cheaper canvases are often better to um, reprime them. So to put another couple of coats of white emulsion on. Remember, white emulsion is nearly always acrylic. So, The two differences there, the warmer grey and the cooler grey as I go on. I do add more to that. So take some. Use a brush whenever you want as well. I mean, if I want to, I want to just get these arches going on here. I'm coming with a. This is the beauty of a round brush. I'm coming with a round brush there straight away. I'm just painting the windows in. Have something in there. So very loosely at the moment. Gradually coming in canvas. This is why Mediterranean light is so much brighter and sharper. Mediterranean light has less water droplets in it, so you can see further and it's brighter. In this country, the damp of the air, the less far you see, the more misty it is. Um, so we get this business of warm to cool, and we get also in focus and definitely out of focus as well. The exception to the rule is sunset or sunrise when you've got warm in the background and cool in the foreground. Yeah. Some things seem obvious when I say them. You thought I thought that, but I think it comes down to it now. Let's start to indicate some stuff going on in the background here. Just start to use these two these different greys where I can add just a little tint of colour onto another. And I can come back in on these umbrella parts later. Don't worry. And I've got to play with colour chemistry too. If I was just doing this one alone, um, then I'd have to say, right, how am I going to exaggerate these colours? Do I make the sky a very light green as against the warmth of this? Um, or do I make this a very light you know, purple here as compared to yellow here because the rubber system the colour serve to make things sing out. I've got to decide what my sky is going to be yet. I'm doing this a bit uh, as using my pants. I don't come into a painting knowing exactly what's going to happen, that'd be very boring. Um, every painting that I do should be a, a new one. We'll start to indicate some of the windows and things in the background here. It's as loosely as this, just to give an indication of things that are happening back there. Is it keeping you occupied? <laughs> things beginning to just get dark, it's just beginning to get dark as they, they come out here. Um, the edge of the roller, rather than the flat of the roller there. A bit more paint so I can get a bit more detail going. <coughs> shapes of heads now. Just indications of them. Simple, simplifying the shapes out. If I was drawing a hand, I wouldn't try and draw around every finger first. I'd draw the outline base shape of that hand here, and then I'd get the fingers in afterwards. Yeah? It's 
great to paint big. It's lovely to have a go at some. When you go smaller, and I've been doing these, and I've to do a couple of smaller ones. What? <laughs> it just uh, it was amazing after that. <coughs> Whatever the colour is at the time, you put it on your roller, then put it in. So I'm going to add a bit more burnt sienna to that now again. So I'm using both of these, so I'm just taking the parts I feel I want as I go along. There's some lovely textures with this this way as well. A bit more warmth under this, these buildings here with that kind of just flicked in. Get the feeling of these spaces in between the... <coughs> this, one, this one took me a good few hours. <laughs> I can normally finish a 2030 in about two and a half hours outside. You know, just straight off painting. Um, the, these take a little bit longer. I mean, that, that first one took me a couple of days. These, these, these paintings are taking, you know, just a couple of days at a time, usually, to draw it out. But it's the memory studies and things as well. I mean, like the Swans one, I mean, that took a bit longer because I was putting those studies together on the computer and moving things around. Right. Forms and colours, exact colours. That's something I'm quite good at doing. I can use it a bit of colour and say, what is that colour? So I'm going to use white, a little touch of yellow ochre, and a touch of magenta into that to try and get that pink at the moment. There you no, if I want to, and nothing stop me, I guess whack it with a brush. Yeah. You, you, you do do as you want. I mean, you know, if I, if I want to get a sharper edge there, I can come straight in with that brush, that expediency, time today, and just you use a roller or a brush as you want. I tend to use the brushes towards the end one, the rollers first, though, but you'll see why in a moment. I just, just for fun, I'll just whack it in with a brush. <coughs> Well, I hope some of you are already thinking, hey, this looks fun. It is. You know, you've got to be brave. You've got to get going for it. Um, but you can't go wrong, really, with this way of painting, because with acrylics, you don't have to go over it again. So even if everything goes totally wrong, you can always lose the canvas or something else. I mean, yeah. the problem. These filaments are very useful, because you can do a thin line like that, and you can work heavy. So it's either work thin or heavy. I'm advanced enough that although demonstrating for you still worries me a little bit, um, thank you, um, because it wouldn't be right, I wouldn't have come not want to please you and, and perform. But these days, I just enjoy just doing the painting anyway. So I mean, I've chosen the work that I wanted to do, and I'm going to enjoy doing it whatever. What make of acrylics do you like using? I've got a whole load in there. I don't really mind. Um, the, you just want to get a fairly good quality one if you can. Um, if you're going to look through these later, I've got everything here from... I think there's even some barrels in there, some schoolwork earlier on. The Amsterdam are quite nice. Um, obviously, Quilla Colour. Galeria, Galeria is a reasonably priced one. They're okay. Uh, it tends like music when you paint I do quite a lot. I like music on that background, yes. Um, and of course the music can affect what you're doing if you don't an Irish jig on your way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have told the story years ago, but it's a true one. I was um, doing a painting in North Humberside. Um, a beautiful little church that looks just like a, um, a constable. And I put all my paints out in the middle of this field and we sat there in the meadow and the cows were going around me and the cows were closer and closer. And the cows would be a bit more and kind of literally painting things. Until I realised that amongst the cows was this <laughs> Huge great bull, you see. And I'm there, there's no way I can get out of that field in time if it decides to. I've got all my paints around and I've sat there because I can't go with my back as well, I can't make a run for it. I'm most tempted. Um, and it, <laughs> the music. I do play the Overton and Irish music, I make mean, Irish drums and so on as well. So I know a few Irish tunes. And I was, in my younger years, an, an RSEM chorister. I've sung in Wells and in Kings and in the Albert Hall and all sorts of places. That was a long time ago. But my voice now, <coughs> I forget it. So anyway, I thought, what do I do here? And the, this thing was coming closer and closer. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll try and put it at ease. So I started to sing, you know, so I understand. <laughs> and the whole herd moved to the other side of the field. <laughs> so there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> there's no reason 
why watercolours can't be as bright as acrylics either. People tend to think that they've got to... Ron Ranson once said this, a lot of his loose work, but he said, why do people have to paint watercolours if they've got gauze over the top? Yes, there is that beauty of watercolour. I do like beautiful effects of light and delicate watercolours. I do like the use of the medium for its purpose. But um, we don't have to paint everything as if it's got it in a dead and dull and one colour compared to another. The relevance of that, painting a sunrise of Brittington Harbour, and I could not get that brightness of the oranges I wanted, and I was plastering more and more caramel orange, more and more chrome yellow. Wouldn't work. Idiot, the opposites. Rough next to smooth, light next to dark, warm next to cool. So, I put more cool colours back into there to bring those oranges out, and there we are. Voila, it works immediately. So, you know, don't just think it's the thing you think is wrong, it could be the thing next to it. And so often with my students' work, that's the case. They, they're working on something and they're frustrated, they can't get it. It's not that that's wrong, it's something over there. This is why it's so important to get one colour against another, because if we have the wrong colours in one place, they'll be wrong somewhere else. We have to... Get some light and things out. It might light on these yellows up. So, it's trying to... Look at that lovely colour. And it brings the blues out. Just one colour brings the others out. And it's so important that we do play one colour against another. It's amazing to say at the moment, it's probably hard to see what's going on, but the more I do, the more this is going to pull together. That's my hope, anyway. Right, I've got to make decisions about what I'm going to do with that sky. The thing with photographs is they bleach out, and when you're taking photographs of landscapes, take a photograph, take two photographs of the same landscape, take one into the sky, and then take one into the land. If you try and take both at once, one will be too dark and one will be too light. So you need to do the two photographs, and that's why they bleach out, because the camera can't handle the huge exposures. Um, unless you're using a filter, you have a filter for the sky, and then you're getting the, you know, it would work out that way, it's with advanced. So I have to take that wise and say, right, what do I actually want that sky to be? Um, am I going to just use a straightforward white as I had there, or a slight cream or white over one colour over another even? What I'm going to do is a very, very light green, and then I'm going to put some white over the top of that later, because I think the green will play against the pinks here, right? To give a broken colour effect. So we'll start with this cooler green, and I'm going to deliberately work <coughs> more colour over it to try and get a broken colour effect. So you lose that white straight away, look. <coughs> Dry them up, put the other colour on there. Um, more times, more of greys. Right, I'm going to use a bit of cadmium orange. Fill the yellow cadmium orange and white. Just to go over that sky now. At this stage, you're just beginning to lose enough white to start to see the shapes appearing. Mm -hmm. You've done very well. I mean, I'd uh, normally half the audience are asleep by now, so. <laughs> but say, you, you keep asking questions, but if you've got something, it doesn't matter whether it's relevant to this or, or something else that you want to. <laughs> So we're just starting to pull together. I'm just starting to pull together. Yes. So nice and loose. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All I'm going to do is putting little bits and dashes and shapes in, and then just building up, you know. You try to paint every little thing in dead correct. What I'm going to do is very, there's his leg going in there. We've got another foot coming through here. We've got a bit of the chair underneath here with a few chair legs. And there's another chair that comes right round the front of the big chair here. Okay. 
takes away the stress of the painting. I tell you that. It's just nice just to be loose. I always think of oil paints as being like strawberries and cream. Well, you go in. <laughs> Come <back> in. <laughs> uh, I said to you, oh. um, it, It's like strawberries and cream, you know, you pour lovely cream over strawberries. And I think oil paint is so lovely and tactile and gungy, you know. Mm. Mind you, you have to watch your fingers with oil. I mean, I, my hands crack up with oil paint. And, so people say, well, why don't you use those artisan uh, water-based ones? I don't like them. They, to me, they mix like mud. Um, I prefer you know, pure oils or pure oils. It looks very complicated. Another very good way to do complicated um, backgrounds, if you prime your canvas black, as I did with that one, um, you can work up layers of acrylic like this, one thing over another, from your darks to your lights. So if you want to do a daisy scene or a meadow scene or whatever, then having a dark canvas and working up from your darks to your lights using thin brush strokes and um, again the, the, the rake brushes are being useful for that because they'll give you all those fine lines and grasses. That, uh, if you uh, haven't watched with me today, but there's a badger scene I did recently in Rigsby Wood and I wanted all, all the bluebells and everything, but I wanted really strong, vibrant colour because you see so many horrible chocolate box bluebells. Um, um, so, and I was using um, this dark ground, and if you look at the internet, you can see you can see the whole thing being painted on on, on, uh, on YouTube. But now, um, down to down to here. Um, the judges seem to have improved a little over the time that they've been going. I think, um, as I say, as a teacher, if I give that much negativity, I mean, some of them were in tears at poor buggers. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So. They didn't pick out the good things, and, and I mean that young lass I thought was tremendous. Her use of yeah, colour, yeah. she was she was the one I think was about second best. I think the guy that won deserved it because they're under pressure, and it was a half about that. It was what you could do under pressure. Um, but I thought the judging was a bit biased and um, <laughs> narrow at times, and, then, and some of the subject matters. I mean, there's people marching up and down. <laughs> Cut out is what you leave in, and I mean, not, not disappearing with, but putting in. So, if I put the dark around his head, there, his head comes out. So, it's not painting just the positive shapes, you've got to get these negative shapes right. Now, the blue behind his head. So, if I take the blue behind his head around, so the head comes stops to come out. And that blue comes right out of that chair there. Same here, very important, we go underneath his chin and around his face here. And I may not even do any more than that, I don't know if that just works for me. Because a little bit of his glasses coming back just to indicate that they are glasses. Um, well, he hasn't really, he's got one here, but it's, it's not, you know, because you know a person has the nose, mouth, eyes, doesn't mean to say you've got to put the eyelashes in. You can just indicate, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where the ears are. If I just want to. <laughs> if we know the glasses will go to some places, so having got that, yeah? Now if I indicate the ear, uh, so we've got the glasses coming back there, if I take the green. Just occasionally, very occasionally, thankfully, I get an awkward customer. And and unfortunately, this artist was missing the point of the demonstration, I think, in a way, and uh, was being a bit more critical, and wanting to see all the I's dotted and the T's crossed, was looking for a more figurative painting from the beginning, wanting me to paint every detail and every colour correctly, as you would see on a normal photograph, and missing the, the point of that we're using abstraction here, we're using facets, we're using a cubist technique, we're enjoying the abstraction of the painting and the colours as much as, tr as using an image and... Uh, getting the illusion of people, the feeling, the atmosphere, the light, the impression, um, seeming to think that we had to have all the ears and the nose and the eyes painted in absolutely in detail. You gradually build it up to what you want. It, this way of painting, you have the choice. She then went on to comment rather negatively about there being a large area of green on one of the heads, um, which I adjusted to try and uh, please her. But what we must remember is that a painting is an individual piece of work. Not everybody's going to like what you do or agree with what you do, and that's why it's individual.
And that's one of the reasons that we teach. That's one of the reasons I show a demonstration like this, is to show other ways of working, different ways of working, different ways of seeing, so that others can explore what you're saying. I had this only once before with a student who was looking at work on demonstration, and I felt like asking her to come up and complete the thing for me because she was making so many comments about what she would have done. It's gradually, the detail is gradually building up, little bit by little bit. This is the trouble for me, I haven't closed up enough. I'm only just seeing what I'm doing get the drawing right. So what do you want next year? If I come back from France to do your demo, what would you like? <laughs> something, I try always to do something completely different than you might not have seen before. Then you've got a choice to try something, rather than do the same old stuff that people... But I, I like this flatness as well. I am playing abstract shapes. You know, if I wanted to paint a portrait, you know I can do it. If I want to paint a realistic portrait, I can do it. So one of the purposes of me doing this is to deliberately pick out the patterns and abstract. So it may be that I want, you know, a flatter, although coming down here I could put more toning in. But I don't want to start turning it into a figurative, directly figurative painting and taking away from the natural Otherwise I'll start changing other things. Is that a bit better? Yeah, that's a bit better. Just gives it a bit more warmth rather than being too green. Because yeah. this has pushed it so far the other direction, there's one one way and there's one the other, you can see. Um, in fact, on this one, it's quite a bit darker just here, which is quite nice. So. And that is another problem with drawing. I mean, I remember doing a portrait when I was doing a portrait by request again, a portrait demonstration in pastels at uh, Mablethorpe Library. And of course, I'm working like this, so I'm drawing in perspective. So the head actually was, <laughs> and the time I got round, I thought, oh God. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to get more attention. I probably would, I might well take a sponge on there, it's like that, for instance. So I'll just do a little bit now, um, just for the hell of it. Um, it was, I think, more happening around here, so it's all we can do there. I'd like to get things like that going on, a bit more texture, just, just not too much, I don't really do it. But, start to get some light coming in, there's some ground and stuff coming in like that. You know, small things you can do as well. You've got all this happening down here. I, I think this is the role of it, I'd like to take that further. Bringing it, you know, bringing it to... Well, I can bring it up to as much as detail as I want, but yeah. you can see there when I stop. Um, but yes, I, I want to bring out simpler shapes of the colour a bit more with the bigger brushes, and I'd like to go back into the rollers in certain places, yeah. But yeah, unfortunately, we've got half our audience now. Well, <laughs> well, you know, they have to go at certain times for different reasons. That's all right. <laughs> 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 it was quite an ambitious thing to do, such a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Say, this, this way, if you see what we have got well, I've got this demonstration piece back now at home, and uh, I need a bit of motivation to get into it again. And obviously, it needs working on. Um, it was good just to show the way of working, but if I want to make it much stronger now, um, I'm going to have to really hit it hard and loosen up with some clean colours again. So let's have a go at that. Okay, I'm going to start off working on the sky here. Try and make some nice clean new colour. I think what I'm going to do first is um, make some very light cadmium orange, which is what I was trying to do yesterday and didn't quite succeed in. Now, start working on the rest. Over here. Let's see if I can get back into it. Sort of lost motivation a bit after yesterday. drastic but I've decided that the head of the figure here is a little bit too small. I want it to be slightly higher than her so I've totally repainted that bit and it's working into it now. Well 
Well, I must admit this is a painting that's taken far longer than I expected. Uh, there's far more to it. I took on quite a challenge when I decided to do this for a demo. I mean, I got the basics done to show them, yes, but we're on our third day now. We've done the demo day, which was uh, ooh, two and a quarter hours I spent on it. Um, and then uh, now the, uh, then the second day, and I spent several hours yesterday, and now I'm going to spend uh, some of this morning to see how far I can get with it to finish it off. And so the final piece. But let's go back to the end of the demonstration. Here's the work that was done at the end of the demonstration as far as I got within that two hours or so. And now we'll go back to the final piece to see the changes and differences. <laughs> 